Questions to ask at a walkthrough. Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Say, so, you know, one of the things that you should always have is a good list of questions to ask when you're at a walkthrough. Now, you know, you'll uh, attend different types of walkthroughs. Uh, in some cases, you may be with a group of people uh, where there's other uh, cleaning contractors that are doing the walkthrough. Uh, there may be times when it's just yourself and the prospect doing the walkthrough. But in either case, you always want to have a good list of questions to ask so you can gather some information that you, that you need. So, um, I got a list of questions, and uh, I got, actually I got 30 of them, and I'll go through the list. Uh, so you'll have some good questions to ask as you're doing your walkthrough. Uh, the first question I have is, uh, do you provide a key or code to get access to the building? Now that's pretty important, you know, because you want to know how you're going to get access to the building. Uh, in some cases, uh, you know, they will have a, a key, a regular key. Some will have a key fob. Uh, some of them may even have just an access code. So you want to ask that. Uh, do you have an alarm? Uh, it's, it's important to know that uh, because if they have an alarm, you have to know where it's at and what the codes are. And uh, if there's any uh, false alarms or things like that, who do you call? Uh, you know, in case there is a, uh, a the alarm goes off that, it's get, that you know that it got set because you didn't uh, get the alarm code in time, uh, so that's important. And uh, number three is uh, what are your hours operation? So you want to know what their hours are because it's going to give you a clear idea of when you'll be able to clean. Now, in most cases, you're going to be cleaning after business hours, so typically that may be after six o'clock, six p.m. But if you're doing day cleaning, you will be uh, cleaning during the daytime hours. So always ask that. Number four, how many employees do you currently have? Well, the reason you're asking this is because we got to know the density of the office or this lo location that we're, that we're going to be cleaning. You know, because the more people that are there, uh, the heavier soils, you know, uh, the, the buildup of soil is going to be higher. So that's why we're asking that. Number five, at what time can we start cleaning? That's very important. Again, you know, because we want to establish is it, um, is it a daytime hour or is it after business hours? Uh, so I always like to know, you know, uh, what time uh, can we come in? You know, if it's 6, 6 p.m., great. Then uh, by what time do we have to be completed with our cleaning in the morning? You know, so maybe that's 5 a.m. in the morning. So I like to have that window of opportunity to get our cleaning done. Because you never know, sometimes emergencies come up and you, you run late and uh, you may have to go at, uh, you know, a couple hours later or something. Uh, number six is where are the, uh, the most high traffic areas? So, you know, that's good to know uh, because you know you're going to have to pay a little more attention to those areas. Uh, so always ask that question. Uh, number seven, do you have a scope of work uh, that, you like, that you'd like to have done? Um, you know, I ask this question every time. And it's interesting how many of the prospects will not have a scope of work or a list of specifications. So in that case, uh, you can always just let them know that you have your own and that you can use that list uh, to provide them with a, with a proposal. Now, if they're getting other quotes uh, with, from multiple cleaners, uh, you want to probably establish your scope of work, your list of specifications as the base. Uh, this is what everybody's uh, basing their pricing off of. So that way everybody's being compared to apples to apples. Okay. Uh, number eight, uh, what are some of the key areas that you'd like us to address while cleaning? Well, that's important. You know, sometimes uh, people have their little pet peeves and, um, you know, you want to make sure that you address those. You know, I had one of my uh, clients that, uh, my contact person, where they really like to see the, the sides of the letter holders dusted. They don't want any, any dust on it. So I made sure of that, that uh, there is never any dust on those letter holders. Number nine, uh, what would you like us to, uh, would you like us to supply your paper and plastic uh, products? Now, um, that's always a good question because that's additional revenue for you. So if you can provide their restroom supplies, you know, the toilet paper, hand towels, Kleenex, uh, things like that there, uh, you can actually uh, sell them to the customer and you'll manage them for them. Uh, the same thing is uh, true for your uh, can liners. So, uh, you know, you're going to have probably three different size can liners, your large, medium, and smalls. 
So uh, they got somebody's got to provide that, and uh, so you want to ask them uh, if they're if they're interested in you uh, taking care of that for them and managing it. So then you could you buy the products, and then you just mark it up uh, five to fifteen percent is is a fair margin. Uh, it all depends on how good a price that you get from your supplier. Now the uh, number ten, uh, what is the frequency of service? Now we have to know that we have to know how often we're going to be cleaning. Is it one day per week, two days, seven days per week? You know, how often is it? Uh, number eleven is uh, how often would you like your carpet cleaned? Now that's a good question because you try to uncover if the project work is going to be included with this with this bid. So always ask that. And if you know if they uh, don't know or they uh, really not sure then you can always make a suggestion you know I always suggest that we clean your carpet once a year a minimum of once a year um, and we uh, do spotting uh, as needed now our, our spotting as needed is obviously when there's a when there's a spot we take care of it and then we'll just prorate it and bill them for the time that we spend cleaning uh, cleaning that spot now uh, you got to remember that the carpet cleaning and any of your project work is always an extra charge, so that's going to be a line item on your proposal unless it's going to be all inclusive. Okay. Then uh, number twelve, uh, what level of appearance do you want to maintain your floors at? Uh, do you want them to shine? Now that's a good question, you know. So what we're doing is we're we're establishing the level of appearance that they want to maintain uh, for their hard floors, and. Um, with that, you know, that's going to help us uh, give an idea about, you know, how often we should be stripping and waxing, burnishing, or spray buffing, you know, and uh, scrubbing and recoating or polishing a floor. So you always want to ask that question. And again, those are services that are additional. Uh, and again, uh, yeah, uh, you know, how often would you like your tile and grout floors uh, scrubbed and sealed? Again, we want to establish that so, so we know that if that's part of the, of the, uh, the bid package or not. Uh, how often would you like your resilient floors stripped and waxed? Very important. We got to know that. We got to ask that question. Again, you know, it all goes back to what level of appearance they want to maintain their floors at. Um, so that way, we can put together a good floor program uh, that will maintain that level of appearance. Uh, number sixteen. Uh, do you have a janitorial uh, supply closet or supply closet to store our equipment and supplies? That's a great question because there's been many times that I've done walkthroughs with prospects. They didn't have any supply closet or a janitorial closet. So where are you going to be putting your supplies? Uh, so you want to find that out and try to establish something. Number 17, how many visitors do you get? Again, besides knowing how many employees they have, we want to know how many visitors they get because that will impact the level of cleaning. Number 18, uh, do your employees load or unload the dishwasher? Now, that's what you want to find out too, is because if they want you to collect uh, dishes throughout the office, that takes time. Uh, so always, always ask that. Uh, the same thing is true. Number 19, uh, do your employees clean the coffee maker? In some cases, in some offices, um, they'll have a service that will, will maintain the coffee uh, makers and stuff, but you have to ask. Then number 20, uh, who would be our contact person in an emergency? Uh, that's very important. You want to be able to know uh, who you're going to have to contact if an emergency does happen. Um, and uh, you know you want to get the, their, uh, their home phone, their mobile phone, uh, so you have, are able to contact them, and their email. And in some cases, you may want to have two people on that emergency list that you would contact. Number 21. Uh, what is the one thing that your current cleaning service doesn't do that you would like to have done? Now, I always like that question. That's a great question. And, uh, you know, I generally will ask that early on through the walkthrough uh, uh, to establish that, you know, just what it is that, that they want done uh, that, that isn't getting done. Number 22, uh, where's the location of the dumpster? You know, uh, it's always good to know where the dumpster is, uh, because in some cases you don't know that prospect may be sharing a dumpster with uh, other offices within a, with a, within a business park or something. And in some cases, you know, there may be uh, locks to the gate, there may be uh, locks on the dumpsters. So you have to know where the dumpsters are and ask them if there if there's any uh, locks or anything like that on them. Number 23, uh, would you like recycling collected? 
uh, that's important too. So you got shredders and you got other types of recycling that you can collect for the for the prospect and obviously put it in the recycling bin. Number 24, which doors are always to be locked? Now that's a good question because in some cases you'll find that uh, maybe a supply room or the, uh, the boss's office, president's office uh, may be locked at all times. So you want to ask that. Number 25, which lights are to be left on? You know, are there any night lights? Because uh, generally that's what we'll, there will be. Uh, there'll be, there'll be night lights that are, will automatically stay on when you turn the lights off. But uh, you want to ask. In some cases that may not be uh, set up that way. So you want to ask them which lights uh, do they want to have left on. Generally it's the ones by the, uh, uh, by the entrance, by the computer, uh, or by the, uh, the alarm system. So people are able to see. Number 26, uh, do you want computer screens and keyboards clean? That's very important, you know, because in, in some cases when you're cleaning those uh, surfaces, uh, you might damage them, you know, especially the computer screens. Um, although they've come a long ways over the years, but you still could use the wrong product on them and cause damage. Uh, so you want to establish that. Are you going to clean, be cleaning computer screens and keyboards? Uh, the keyboards is because sometimes just by uh, dusting those, uh, the computer will turn on. You don't want to be accused of uh, going on somebody's computer because that has happened. Uh, let's say you're dusting a keyboard and for whatever reason the screen pops up and, and an employee is walking by and they see that happen and they think that you're just getting on the computer. So that's why that that's that's, uh, question is so important. Uh, number 27, uh, when are you thinking about making a change in service? Now here I want to I want to try to establish that when are they making the change? You know, is it going to be the first of the month, the fifteenth of the month? You know, uh, are they? You know, I, I'm trying to establish if they're serious about making a change, or are they just looky loos? <laughs> Number twenty eight. Uh, when you when will you be deciding who will be your cleaning service? Again, I'm really trying to nail that down because it's important. You know, uh, uh, many times that you'll come do a walkthrough, you do a proposal. Uh, then you'll either present the proposal or, or email it and you will never hear from anybody uh, even though you do follow up uh, and you should be following up to, to get answers. But at least this way uh, you, you try to establish a date uh, and hope, you know, to lock them in to that. Uh, number 29, uh, are, you willing, uh, are you wanting an all-inclusive pricing? Now I kind of mentioned that earlier uh, when we were talking about hard floors and, and project work. Um, so you want to establish that, you know, are they looking for all-inclusive pricing, meaning that their general cleaning service that you'd be providing and uh, all of their uh, special services or project work, such as carpet cleaning, hard floors, windows, uh, things like that, their upholstery cleaning, and, and so on, would be included with the price. Now, uh, and that's not a bad way to go because if you can establish that all-inclusive pricing, that means that you can now go ahead and schedule all those uh, project work or special services ahead of time. And you're able to do that, you know, you can schedule them out a year in advance. Uh, that's what's nice about it. And you know you're going to get paid for it. Uh, other than having somebody say, well, uh, we're not going to do it this month or this, you know, they keep on postponing it otherwise. So, uh, so I ask, you know, do they want all-inclusive pricing? Because that's, that's simple enough to do. Uh, number 30, uh, would you like me to deliver the proposal uh, to you or email it? You always want to ask that. Uh, it's best that you can present the proposal to them in person uh, because then again you're, you're able to uh, you know, look at their body language and see their reaction to, uh, to what you're saying as you're, as you're uh, presenting the proposal. Um, you know, but more and more times this, uh, today, you know, more people want you to just send, it, uh, send them an email. Uh, in that case, uh, just always make sure, again, uh, if you've established a day that they're going to make a decision or something like that there, always let them know that you're going to do, do a follow-up, that you're going to check in with them, you know, four days, five days, uh, seven days later. Uh, but always uh, set that date and, and time, just letting them know that, okay, I'll check in with you next Tuesday at about 3 o'clock, or I'll stop by your office at, you know, 3 o'clock. Uh, because again, we want to see if they're going to be making a decision, uh, if they were serious about uh, about uh, making uh, making a change in their cleaning service. So, well, hopefully these 30 questions are, are helpful to you. Uh, so keep them in mind when you're uh, when you're doing your walkthrough. 
Uh, now these were in no specific order. Uh, I just wrote them down. And, um, but yeah, they, they come in very hand, handy because again, you have to, to gather all your information in order to make a, a, a good price, uh, price point, uh, create a price point for the cleaning. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and click on the like button and share. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, uh, please click on the subscribe button. And uh, if you're looking for more information on how to do walkthroughs, we do have a, a, a training video for a DVD called uh, Walkthroughs, and How to Measure and uh, Do a Walkthrough of a Building. You can find that on the janitorialstore.com. Um, and you'll find even much more uh, train, uh, training uh, DVDs and uh, training uh, videos on Clean Smart University and uh, CSU Business Library, where we have over 8,000 training videos. So, uh, there you have it. Until next time, thanks.